Hey, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today in Oxford. Um, welcome to the Mathematical Institute and um, welcome to the Maths Open Day. I hope you have, hope you have a fantastic day today. It's great to see uh, so many of you here today. Uh, so my name's James. I'm the admissions coordinator for Maths at Oxford. Uh, it's my job to make sure that our admissions process is fair between all of the different colleges to make sure we take the best mathematicians. Um, here's the structure of the day. Um, we're going to take um, uh, half an hour at the start to talk about mathematics at Oxford, and then we're going to give you two tasters of mathematics. First, Dr. Vicky Neal is going to talk about pure mathematics, and then Dr. Dominic Vella is going to talk to you about applied mathematics. There'll be a chance to leave and come between the sessions if you want to. Um, later on, we've got 11.30, Neil Laws and James Studd talking about two of the joint honours courses over here, and you might also be interested in talks over at the computer science um, faculty uh, over the road. Okay, um, but first I need to tell you everything you need to know about mathematics at Oxford. Um, so, off we go. Um, so, welcome to the Andrew Wiles building. We've been based here since 2013 when the new building opened. It's a really nice building. It's got lots of maths built into it. I hope that while you're here today, you get a chance to uh, look around the building and see some of the uh, mathematical features that we built into it. Uh, this is where all of the maths lectures happen. It's also where we keep all of the maths researchers, uh, all the lecturers and all the people doing uh, cutting edge maths research. And it's really nice having everyone in the same place uh, in the same building. So that's the Andrew Wiles building, uh, home of maths in Oxford. Um, here's an intro to the courses that we offer uh, in maths. Uh, we have eight of these really. Um, Four, four different courses, maths and three joint honours courses. Maths with philosophy, maths with statistics, and maths with computer science. Each of those are offered as a three-year BA or a four-year master's course. And I've put the approximate intake up there. We don't have a, a precise number, uh, but the approximate size is about 190 mathematicians, about 20 or 30 on each of the joint honours courses. So I'll say a little bit more about the joint honours courses uh, in a moment, but I thought I'd talk about just mathematics first, since that be, that's the biggest of those four courses. Um, so here's what you might study in, in the first year of our maths course. These are the courses that we've currently been lecturing to our first years in, in this lecture room. So we put all of our first year mathematicians together and we tell them about uh, these topics. And it, it's a mix of Things you've already heard about at school, but taught again from the ground up. Things you've never heard of. Possibly your new favourite sort of maths introduced to you in first year through these uh, topics. We've got things that you might have seen before from pure maths, like um, algebra and calculus, but taught again. Uh, new things like group actions that you maybe don't get to see uh, at school. Uh, we teach you multivariate calculus and applied techniques like partial differential equations. Uh, these are core skills uh, that we think every mathematician should have, so that later on as you specialise into different sorts of maths, you've got these core skills. Skills uh, at hand. Uh, after the first year, uh, we move to the, the second year where we've got again some, some core courses, more um, of those skills that we think all mathematicians should have at the top there in large writing, uh, and then some options for you to choose from. So you'll take um, five or six of these options uh, from this list here in smaller writing, and again, there's, there's more and more options uh, for you to think about. Taking. So we've got some pure maths up there, things like uh, modules and topology, but also more applied maths options like learning about uh, fluid dynamics and waves and quantum theory. Um, mathematical biology as well. We teach our mathematicians special relativity if they want to know about special relativity. So that's our, that's our second year. Uh, and then in third year, it's kind of more of the same. I've, I put this slide up not really so that you can read it, but just to demonstrate the huge variety of courses we're currently teaching to our third year mathematicians. You'll take maybe uh, eight to ten of, of these courses in third year. So there's a huge variety of subjects up there. We try to keep this up to date based on what our researchers are looking into, based on cutting edge mathematics. Lots of these topics of maths didn't exist when we started teaching mathematics hundreds of years ago, as we try to keep it up to date. That's our, that's our third year. It's a chance to uh, either specialise into your favourite bits of maths, or a chance to do broad study in different areas of maths, putting together uh, these different uh, topics that you might have seen. Um, okay, I should say, I don't have a slide for fourth year of mathematics, the master's course, because there are even more courses to choose from. There are about 50 or 60 courses at the moment uh, in fourth year. It's just to really specialise into certain areas of maths. Um, one of the aims of our fourth year maths course is that it's a good preparation if you want to do current research in mathematics. If you're interested in doing a, a PhD or a DPhil in research, uh, then our fourth year maths course is supposed to get you up to date in those areas of maths that you're interested in. So lots more topics in fourth year. Uh, so here's a little bit about the joint honours schools. Um, I'll start with maths and statistics because it's the easiest to explain. Uh, the first year for maths and statistics is exactly the same as maths. You do that, that same core skills set of courses in, in the first year. Uh, after that you get 
access to more options in, in second and third year, uh, including more statistics options. Uh, you've got the option to do more than 50% statistics if you want to. Uh, so that's the Math and Statistics course, a chance to learn about uh, machine learning and cutting edge data techniques. Um, math, we also offer Mathematics and Philosophy, uh, which is a chance for you to learn some core mathematical skills, but also the underpinning philosophy. Uh, you'll take some philosophy courses alongside some of, some of the core mathematics, doing about 50-50 in the first year, with a chance to specialize through second and third years into those areas which really interest you. Uh, mathematics and computer science starts out exactly 50-50 uh, between maths and computer science, but has the chance for you to take uh, more maths or computer science courses as you go through second and third year. So there's a joint honours course, again, with a kind of flavour of mathematics throughout them, uh, with the chance to take options from, from those other, other subjects as well. Um, I thought I'd say a little bit about uh, the choice between three and four years. Um, so the good news is you don't have to decide now, whether you're going to be doing three years of mathematics or four years of mathematics, uh, this is a choice that actually lots of our students haven't made yet because we only asked them to make this choice at the start of third year, based on how exams are going and how uh, the sorts of topics that they're interested in developing. Uh, they might choose to stay on for this fourth year of mathematics. Um, students aiming to do a PhD, as I've said, we, we use that fourth year as a way to get up to speed um, with cutting edge mathematics. But, but both degrees, the three year and the four year degree, are well respected by employers uh, for teaching you um, problem solving skills to be really numerous and in some cases also really good at arguing logically about what's, what's true. Um, so that's a choice between three and four years. Um, good news is you don't have to choose yet. Um, I also want to throw in a quick advert for another fourth year course um, called Maths and Theoretical Physics. You can't apply for this one now because it's, it's just a fourth year master's course, uh, and it's in cutting edge physics. Uh, it turns out that modern physics is really mathematical. Um, the sort of skills that you need to be a modern physicist uh, includes lots and lots of mathematical skills. Um, so this is a fourth year course that we admit people from, from either mathematics degrees or physics degrees. Um, so after three years of doing maths or three years of doing physics, um, or physics and philosophy, you can apply to do this fourth year stream, masters in maths and theoretical physics, and it's got a huge variety of cutting edge physics in there uh, based on uh, maths topics and physics topics. It's taught, from, taught by both departments. Okay, so a quick advert for a master's course that you can't yet apply for. Okay, um, so how do we teach all of that content? Um, we've got a kind of unique teaching model. We've got um, lectures, which you might expect. You should imagine um, 200 or so mathematicians in, in this room in first year, and somebody standing here and teaching you maths at the boards. We've got a taster of what that might look like in half an hour if you stay for Vicky Neal's talk. Um, obviously, that's accompanied by problem sheets. We like to set our mathematicians work to do to test how, how well they understand the topic so they can think about this in, in detail. Um, but a nice thing we do at Oxford is we run these tutorials as well. Uh, so in a small group with maybe two or three students and one tutor, who'll be a college lecturer or a college member of faculty or a graduate student or somebody who really knows the course, um, to go through those problem sets with you, to talk about the course and to talk about where the course is going. Uh, it's a chance to have a, an hour of discussion um, about the course in, in, in some detail, which is really helpful for our students. It means we can put a lot of maths into our maths course because we know that we've got that tutorial support to keep everyone up to speed with all the maths that's developing. If there's something you don't really understand in the lectures, you can think about it a bit on your own and then talk, talk about it in the tutorial to keep up with all the maths that we're showing you. Um, that's in years one and two. Uh, in years three and four, again, we're still doing lectures for each option, normally in smaller classrooms as people specialize more into those options. Uh, and we run intercollegiate classes, so pu pulling people together from, from different colleges uh, into a slightly larger group uh, to talk about the problem sets with a, a teaching assistant uh, and possibly lecturer, lecturer support. Okay, so that's thir third and fourth year. That's how we support everyone. Uh, here's what it might look like for a typical week. Uh, in first year, at least, you'd have 10 lectures here in this room, 50-minute uh, talks about mathematics. These days, the, the lecturer might have handed out the notes beforehand on paper or online. Um, there's one problem sheet set for every two to four lectures, something for you to work on in your spare time. Uh, I want to really stress that independent study is an important part of university study of being, of being a mathematician. To have these problems that you're stuck on, you don't know how to do, you have to think about how you're going to overcome uh, these, these challenges by, by really thinking about all the maths that you've seen before. So independent study is uh, important. I've put that up as uh, research in libraries, talking to other students because communicating about maths is important. Uh, and as I've said, we've, we've got those tutorials to support you as well while you're here. Okay, so that's what a typical week might look like in first year. Uh, in terms of assessment, uh, we run mostly I exams to assess our students at the end of the year. Um, in first year, you'd have five um, exams of length between two and three hours. 
Uh, but there's also a chance to do some computational mathematics projects. We don't expect our mathematicians to know any programming languages or have any programming experience when they start, um, but we do expect that once we've taught them a bit of maths, that it becomes easier to learn how to tell a computer how to do some maths. Um, so we have these computational projects as well. Um, in years three and four, there's a chance to do um, an extended project or write a dissertation uh, alongside uh, assessment through exams. This is a chance to have some writing skills alongside all your math skills. Um, employers tend to like if you can explain yourself, uh, uh, explain, your uh, explain your mathematics as well as doing the mathematics. Okay, uh, so that's our assessment. Um, how can I convince you to put Oxford down as, as one of just five universities that you apply for through UCAS? Well, I hope you've, I've convinced you that there's there's a lot of maths in our maths course, and we pack all of our maths into, into that course. If you want a course with lots of different maths topics, with lots of great teaching for that maths, um, then this is a, a great course that you should consider applying to. Um, it's also quite a difficult maths course, which means it's a challenge for people. And for some mathematician, that's, that's really great. That's what you want, a course with lots of maths in it, um, so that this is a sort of challenging test of how good you are at maths. Um, that's backed up by that tutorial support that I've mentioned um, through a friendly collegiate atmosphere, which I'll say more about in, in a minute. Uh, you might be impressed by the academic reputation of our course and uh, tutors um, or by the employability prospects of our graduates. So I want to say a little bit more about colleges. I've, I've mentioned this friendly collegiate atmosphere, and that's something I really believe in, that our mathematicians aren't just members of the Mathematical Institute. Uh, they're all associated with a particular college. Um, there are 29 colleges which admit mathematicians. I mean, that's a sort of community of not just that club of mathematicians, but also people studying other subjects. It means that our first years come to the lectures and they meet other mathematicians, but they also have a college community where they meet people who aren't mathematicians, which is always healthy as well. Um, so meeting people who are not mathematicians, and those colleges tend to organize um, student societies, um, sports activities, there'll be a, a canteen, a di dining hall, um, opportunities to really gel as a as a college community. Uh, at least in first year will be uh, accommodation, and in a lot of cases, second and third year accommodation uh, as well through the colleges. If you're here in Oxford today, uh, you've got a chance to visit some colleges. They're all open and very keen for you to have a look around and see the accommodation, see what the college site is like. Um, people often ask me how to choose a college or which college is the best. Uh, and it's part of my job to say that every college is the best. Um, every college is fantastic in, in its own way. Um, the colleges are much more similar than they are different. Remember, everyone comes here for their maths lectures. So everyone's getting the same quality of maths education. We get the same lectures and the same problem sets, same exams at the end. Um, we take the best applicants, regardless of which college you've applied to. Um, so we've got lots of processes behind the scenes uh, to compare candidates from different colleges, to make sure that we're taking the best people, regardless of which college they've applied to. As a result, 25% of our first years in this room aren't at the college that they applied to. Um, but if you ask them which college is best at the end of first term, I've got a feeling that all of them know that their college is the best. Um, something about that college atmosphere, again, uh, makes it a really nice place to be. And there's also this thing you can do um, called an open application. Um, if you really can't choose between the colleges, uh, then you might put an open application, in which case you'll be automatically assigned to a college by a computer algorithm and then treated exactly as if you'd applied to that college. Uh, the tutors won't know that you made an open application. Um, and I'm quite keen that you're treated exactly as if you made a direct application to that, to that college. So there's sort of no advantage and no disadvantage to that. OK. Um, so I've like thrown together here some, some details of how the application process actually works. Um, if you put Oxford on your UCAS form, as I hope you will, uh, then you'll need to apply by the 15th of October. The deadline is 6 p.m. on the 15th of October. Um, for those doing A-levels, um, you're expected to be doing maths, and if your school offers further maths, we expect you to be doing further maths as well. More on that in a moment. Um, you also need to be registered to take the maths admissions test. I have some boring registration details coming up, I'm afraid. Um, so most candidates will sit this in their school or college. If, you're, if you currently sit tests in your school or college, um, then you'll probably sit the maths there as well. Um, your school or college needs to be registered as a test centre, and they need to register you to take the test. In practice, this just means make sure that your school knows that you're, you're going to be taking this maths admissions test at the end of October. Um, the registration process takes at least a day, and there are details on this website uh, of the people who administer our test for us. OK, um, so that's details about how you register for the maths admissions test. Um, I should say, if you're um, sitting this um, worldwide, then we sit the same maths test for everyone around the world. Um, and you'll sit this in a registered test center. You can find a, a list of registered test centers on our website, uh, the same website there. Just search for open test centers where you can take this test. OK, um, so details on the maths admissions test. Let's do some actual, actual maths. Um, the test date is on the 30th of October. 2019. 
Um, it's a two and a half hour long test, which is maybe a bit longer than some of the other maths tests you do. Um, it's a mix of multiple choice questions and longer questions where you'll need to show your working out, show your reasoning. Uh, and there's 40 marks on the multiple choice section and 60 marks on the, the longer questions. Um, it's marked by our graduate students, and we get our graduate students into market because they're really good at maths. They're really good at noticing uh, when your method is going to work. So that if you do a question in a way that I wasn't expecting, then we've got the graduate students there to, to work out how many marks to give you. So there's no one way to do the question. They're, they're really respecting any attempt at questions that, that, will, that will work. Um, I've put lots of past papers, lots of solutions, um, average scores for past years, even histograms of different math score distributions, if you're into that, or on the website, the only website you need to go to, which is maths.ox.ac.uk slash r slash mat, all lowercase. That's the maths admissions test website. It's got, I hope, everything you need to know uh, about the maths admissions test. If anything's missing, feel free to email me and suggest more, stu more stuff I can put on that website. Um, so a little bit about the content. Um, the maths test is based on a really limited set of mathematics. Um, I don't know, if, even, if you're, even if I know you're taking A-levels, I don't know if you're doing A-level maths and then further maths, or if you're doing both of those at the same time. So the only maths I can assume you know, even if you're doing A-levels, is AS single maths. So we have this really limited syllabus based on maths we expect you to have seen by the 30th of October 2019. It, it's one side of A4, and it's, it's on that website. Um, so if you want to check that you've seen enough maths to do this test, uh, maybe you're sitting a different exam board and you want to check that your exam board lines up at least slightly with A-level maths, you can check that one-page syllabus on the website and see what maths we make. Um, we make the questions difficult then, not by asking about breadth of maths, uh, but testing your depth of understanding. Can you apply these maths topics in unfamiliar situations? Um, if I give you a question that's a mashup of two different maths topics, uh, can you work out how to apply both of them at the same time? Can you untangle that? Um, all of the problems look quite unfamiliar. When you first look at a problem, you won't know what to do. You'll be stuck. Uh, and that's kind of the fundamental state of being a mathematician, to be stuck on a maths problem. Um, so we want to test, can you get unstuck? Can you work out what to do and how to make progress uh, with that maths question? And then once you've thought of a plan, can you execute, execute your plan fluently to get through uh, that maths question? OK, so the maths admissions test, loads of past papers online and, um, and answers as well if you want to try out some, some past test questions. I think I'd also encourage you, if you're going to go down the route of practicing lots of past questions, um, Matt's not the only test out there. There are loads of other maths admissions tests. I won't name them. Actually, loads of other great sources of maths questions on, on the website. Um, if you can find other ways to practice being stuck on maths problems, then that's probably good practice for um, not just for math or admissions, but good practice for being a mathematician, which is what I'm really interested in. OK, um, so I've got a list here of all the stuff that we use to decide um, who to make offers to. Um, so you'll put in a UCAS application, and we get your previous academic performance um, from your UCAS application. We get your predicted grades. Uh, we also get a teacher's reference. Your teacher will tell us how keen you are on maths. Um, you'll, you'll, write a referen uh, you'll write a personal statement yourself that will tell us how keen you are on maths. Um, we'll have your maths admissions test score, of course. And we use all of that together to decide who to invite to interview. We're lucky in that we get lots of great applicants. Um, we can shortlist down to about three times as many applicants as we have places uh, for the interview stage. Um, if we're interviewing you, it's because we think we stand a chance of making you an offer. We're interested in you from your application and your MAP score. Um, we look at that all together. There's no hard cutoff on GCSEs, for example. There's no hard cutoff on, on MAP score. We, we consider everything together. Um, once we've invited you to interview, obviously we'll have the information from that interview as well. And we use everything together again to decide who to make the offers to. Um, so we won't just use the interview as some sort of final hurdle. We've still got your UCAS application and your MAT score. And in fact, the paper that you wrote on for the, for the MAT, we had the actual booklet that you wrote in. Uh, so we have really quite a lot of uh, maths information. I, I suppose I should say at this stage that stuff not on this slide that we, we don't use um, to judge applications. Um, we, we don't take into consideration things like your extracurricular activities. Like if you're really good at karate or the tuba, then we, we don't take that into consideration. We're really trying to take the best mathematicians based on maths ability. Okay. Um, so here's more information about interviews. Um, if you're invited to interview, this will uh, be in early December. And as I said, we invite about three times as many people as we have places to interview. We will we'd invite more people, but we don't have the resources in early December to invite more people. Um, if you live outside of Europe, then you're probably going to be invited to be interviewed by phone or over the internet through a program a bit like Skype. Um, if you live in Europe, though, uh, we're going to invite you to come to Oxford. If you've made it to Oxford today, then we'll invite you back for your interview here in December. Um, you'll be accommodated if you come to Oxford at the college that you applied to 
or the college you were assigned to if you made an open application. Uh, and you'll have a chance to meet current undergraduates while you're here. Um, if you come to Oxford, then you'll be interviewed not just by that college that you applied to, but also by a second college uh, that's been assigned to you by an algorithm. Um, and that's one of our processes to make sure that you've been seen by two sets of tutors, uh, to make sure that we're, we're cross-comparing and taking the best applicants. Okay, so you can expect, as a result, at least two interviews while you're here in Oxford. Um, those interviews are going to be academic in nature. We're going to ask you maths questions and find out what happens when, I guess, you're stuck on maths problems again. And we're going to give you a quite hard maths problem, probably, because it's no fun watching you do maths problems that you can do easily. Uh, we're going to give you a maths problem that you need to think about. Uh, and my main advice here is to, to talk out loud about what your ideas are during that interview. Um, to do maths, but also tell us what you're thinking and tell us what you're doing. Listen to the hints that your interviewers are giving you. Uh, we're trying to get you unstuck. We're trying to give you hints and see how you respond to unfamiliar maths and a little bit of teaching. Um, so it's academic in nature. You should expect prompts and hints. Um, we know how to do the question. We're trying to help you do the question and see how you respond to that. Um, and if you're applying for one of those joint degrees, you can expect to be interviewed in both disciplines. So math and computer science, you expect questions from each of those disciplines. OK, so you'll be interviewed at least once by your first choice college, usually twice, actually, uh, and then at least once by your second choice college. Uh, we give, give our candidates in Oxford lots of interviews. Uh, we know that people tend to be quite nervous in their first interview, but then by the end of that three-day period of interviews, um, people have done quite a few interviews and more relaxed and uh, doing better at maths, we, we've noticed. OK, um, so that's interview process. Um, I should say we use all of this together um, to decide who to make offers to. Um, we send out our offer letters, um, or these days, I suppose, offer emails in some cases, uh, in January uh, after, after the Christmas break. Um, and I should say, by that point in January, we've essentially made all of our decisions, right? We don't, we're not in the business of making dramatically more offers than we have places. Uh, we make about as many offers as we have places, um, knowing that almost everyone we make these offers to is going to have no trouble with their A-levels or, or equivalent. It's just going to start in October. So that's kind of the end of the decision process in January. I was like, here are our standard conditional offers. But as I've said, these, these tend to not be much of a hurdle for the people we've made offers to. Perhaps motivated by having an Oxford offer, people find that actually they, they can get an A-star in maths and they, they can get an A-star in further maths. So that's our standard conditional offer for A-levels for maths, maths and statistics, and maths and philosophy. Uh, A-star in maths, A-star in further maths, and A in any third subject. Um, we've got the system of reduced offers, though, because we know that some schools can't teach further maths to full A-level um, or can't teach further maths at all. Um, if that's the case for you, um, then please mention this somewhere on your application. Uh, our standard offer in that case uh, is to base our offer on the maths that you, you are doing. Um, so if your school doesn't offer further maths at all, uh, then we have the capacity to make an offer A star AA with the A star in maths and, and A's in two more subjects. I should say if you're doing four A levels because you're lucky enough to be at a school that will teach you for four A levels, um, then these are still the, the offers that we'd make on, on three subjects. We, we don't make offers based on four full A levels. Um, the offer would either be worded to say A star in maths, A star in further maths, a in either of your other two subjects, or we might pick one of the other two subjects. Um, we found it doesn't make much difference which of those we do in practice. Okay, so three, three A-levels. Um, our IB offer is 39 overall with 766 at higher level. For advanced hires, um, two or three, depending on how many your school can teach. Uh, obviously, A in mathematics. Uh, and for maths and computer science, that joint honors course, it's a little bit different. We're looking for one A-star that's in maths or further maths. With, again, that reduced um, system of offers if your school can't teach further maths. Okay, but as I've said, when we get to exams, this doesn't prove much of a hurdle for the people we've made offers to. Almost everyone we make an offer to in January starts the course in October. Okay, um, here's some advice very quickly on preparing for this application. I suppose my main bit of advice is to revise the maths that you've already seen before. Look at your A-level maths or equivalent. Look at the maths that you've done already and think about how it joins together. Think about the connections between mathematical topics that you've seen. If you've got a favorite bit of maths from school, try and look into it a bit more. There is so much stuff out there on the web now. Um, Wikipedia is quite technical and complicated. There's also Math World, which is a, an encyclopedia of maths, and, and loads of YouTube videos or things recommending uh, ways to to teach yourself a little bit more maths. If you're interested in a particular topic, uh, there's probably more stuff out there that you can find out about to, to look into. Um, so it's a great time if you're interested in doing a little bit of independent study or research. Um, that's a great skill. I'm not really recommending that just for application, but just for practicing being a mathematician, is looking into things uh, on your own back. Um, you might have a go at some past admissions tests. Uh, I hope you also have a go at some, some other maths questions as well. Um, there are things out there like, um, 
UKMT challenges, um, British Maths Olympiad papers, STEP papers, AEA papers, Enrich website, underground maths, there's a bunch of them. Uh, we don't use any of those in our actual admissions process, but I'm recommending that you, you have a look at them just because they're cool maths problems. And if you're thinking about doing maths for three years, then you, you might be interested in doing a little bit of maths now. Um, you might like to arrange a, a mock interview with a teacher. Um, if you can't do a mock interview with a teacher, then perhaps consider talking to a friend about mathematics. I know that's drastically uncool, but if you can find someone who is willing to let you talk, to, talk about mathematics to you, that's really helpful practice of you explaining uh, the mathematics uh, that you're interested in. Uh, perhaps they're also preparing for an interview and they can explain um, French revolutions or historical studies or something, and then you cannot tell anyone else that this ever happened. Cool. Um, you can also visit our website, which is uh, maths.ox for Oxford, .ac for academic, .uk for United Kingdom, which has got loads more details about what you study on our course at the moment, uh, what we're currently offering. It's got um, synopsis of all of those courses that I threw up on the screen really quickly. If you want to find out what you actually do in third year viscous flow, then you can check on our website uh, for more details about courses uh, coming up and application details, I suppose, as well. Um, final tips on how to find out more. So you could ask questions today. I'll be taking questions in the live stream comments at 10.30, all the lights have just gone off. I'll be taking questions in the live stream comments um, from 10.30 to 11.30, and then I'll be taking questions in, in real life after that, before the next session, so over the lunch break. Um, if you're here in Oxford today, you've got a chance to um, visit some colleges to find out more uh, about, um, no, there, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and we're back. Um, you've got a chance to find out more about colleges, maybe you'll visit a college and fall in love with what it looks like, maybe accommodation will be great, maybe you'll be really near a cricket pitch and you wanna be near the cricket pitch, maybe you'll have a a couple of ducks and a pond, and that would be just the best thing ever. Um, but I, I really encourage you to visit some colleges and talk to them uh, about maths. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, then you can email us, uh, undergraduate.admissions at maths.ox.ac.uk. You can also grab a copy of our prospectus, um, which we've handed out today. Uh, it's also online slash r slash prospectus. As I've said before, check the, the website for all the most up-to-date details. That's maths.ox.ac.uk, uh, or for general application details on ox.ac.uk slash apply. OK, thank you very much for listening to all that rattling, uh, lightning speed talk. And there's going to be a minute now to swap over talks as we get ready uh, for Vicky Neal to show you some maths. Uh, this is your last chance to leave if you don't want to see any pure maths. If you're watching on the live stream, we'll be back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Thank you. <laughs>